one. Uh, Garrett, if you don't mind, this is the Pac-12. Of course, a great win for Utah in their win against Southern Cal. And the, how about Whittingham, Whittington go, uh, uh, Whittingham going for two and getting it with 38 seconds to go? This gutsy win. For Saturday them. was an incredible day. I yeah. mean, it really was. And, uh, you know, for all the talk this past offseason about, you know, contraction and super leagues and all this BS, like – Saturday is a prime example of why, why, why would we do that to this sport? Like, why would we want to eliminate the possibilities of some of these games? Now, granted, you could still have USC, Utah, and Alabama, Tennessee, and slice like half the country apart if you wanted to. But I just think it was all the right ingredients from top to bottom from Thursday night in West Virginia, Baylor through, you know, Saturday night, late into the night. Like that's college football. That's what it's supposed to be at its best. And that's what we got this weekend. And I mean, Alabama, Tennessee was just an incredible, incredible game. USC, Utah was a thrilling, entertaining game. And uh, Florida State, Clemson was, I mean, like uh, all of them, they were just, they were fantastic. And the Pac-12, I mean, I know you're about to get to it, but uh, they've, for as rocky as this offseason was, they're they're having some fun right now as far as on the field goes. They have Oregon and UCLA both ranked in the top 10 in both polls. USC's 12th. And so they're, they're handling their own. And so here is a graphic, and leave it up for a second. Here's a graphic, matchups between Pac-12 teams ranked in the AP Top 10 playing each other since 1986. There's 17 games, including what will be 18. First time since 2018, two Top 10 teams in the Pac-12 will meet each other. It has not been often. You can see a lot of uh, this and that, teams that are kind of mixed in. Oregon had their run. Uh, Washington then had their run in 16, 16, 17, 18. Uh, but first time since 2018, matchup with the Pac-12 with two teams, both of them, at 9 and 10 and 10 and 9, depending on which poll you look at, ranked in the top 10. Yeah, it hasn't been great football. I mean, it really hasn't. Oregon pretty much carried the conference for, I don't know, shoot, nearly two decades. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you really think about it. And, yeah, you mentioned Washington popped up, and they were a playoff team at one point, And, I mean, you're th- yeah, USC was kind of out of commission there for, for quite a while. And now you've got them back. Utah looked like Utah on Saturday night. That looked more like what you came to expect from them and not what we had necessarily seen prior to that. Um, at UCLA's proven it's for real. Um, and, uh, you know, Oregon with Bo Nix, you know, I, you're always going to be a little shaky on it if he can stay clean as far as, you know, turnovers and things like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're a good team as well. So it's a – it's a fun league right now, and it's cool to see that they're, you know, experiencing success and having some big matchups, and it's not just all, oh, what's on there after midnight, what, what Oregon State, Washington State. No, there's there's a lot more to it than Pac-12 after dark for the first time in a while. Yeah, I, I also think on Bo Nix, I think part of it is he's in a place now where the fans aren't uh, so far up his backside they could brush his teeth from the back uh, like you are at Auburn. I mean, like that, that fan base – Need to just take a huge chill pill, um, and I, I hope the best for them. Uh, but th- it's kind of a crazy town right there right now. And so Bo Nix leaving there and going to a place that, believe me, I know Oregon fans are crazy, but it's much more chill just by its very nature uh, at, at Oregon. Um, there's things they do there that <laughs> just make everybody relax. What do you mean? They, they, they're all retired? Yeah. <laughs> no. From the 